I mean, the war on fats is just plain nuts. I was talking about all the wars we have on different things in this country, like cholesterol and raw milk and things that are just, we're not looking at the science, and uh, um, there's a big misunderstanding with a lot of these things. And fats is definitely one of those topics where there's a lot of misunderstanding. So, some questions to ponder as you think about fats. How come the less fat we eat, the more weight we gain? Uh, if you remember, we kind of started a war against fat, and doctors started putting everybody on low-fat diets. Um, and ever since then, obesity rates have just and continued to go up, and heart disease, and all these other diseases. So that just doesn't make sense, that we started eating low-fat, and we haven't had any improvements when it comes to obesity and heart disease and some of these other diseases. If low-fat was the answer, well, we should see some improvements, and we're not. Um, which is better to eat, carbs or fat? That's an important question to consider. What fats are best for your body? That's important, too. Um, it's not necessarily just a free-for-all that you can just you know, eat as much or anything you want, even if it's a good fat. you still got to understand um, your body and, and uh, what's best for you. And then how do you determine good fats versus bad fats? That's always a big question. So we'll go over all of those things. If you have any questions along the way, just shout it out. We're small and quaint tonight, so you can talk about whatever, whatever you think of. Um, I'm going to start talking about carbohydrates. Um, I think it's very important to discuss and understand carbohydrates before we even get into talking about fats. Um, there's nothing wrong with carbohydrates. This is kind of another thing we have a war against right now. No carbs, eating low carb. Again, it's, it's a war on the wrong thing. Because the, the, the problem is not carbohydrates itself. Carbohydrate is energy for the body. It's fuel for the body. You cannot live without carbohydrates. You cannot exercise and run and do all the function you need to do without that energy that we get from carbohydrates. So carbohydrates aren't the enemy. It's that we're eating the wrong foods. Just like with everything else, it comes back to what's the quality of the food you're eating? What's the quality of the carbohydrates we're eating? You guys have heard of simple carbohydrates versus complex carbohydrates? Complex carbohydrates, things that have a slow controlled release into the body, which are complex foods, whole vegetables, whole fruits, whole grains, beans, legumes, these types of things. As soon as they're processed, they turn into simple carbohydrates. Simple means they've lost the complexity of the nature of the food. It's no longer a complex, complete food. It's suddenly a simple sugar that's literally just sugar when it enters the body. White bread, white flour, white pasta, sugar, donuts, pastries, all these types of things. Um, so again, the war should not be on carbohydrates because it's just really confusing to people when they're like, okay, I'm going to eat low carb or no carb. I'm cutting out all carbs. You hear people say that. It's like, do, you, do people really know what they're saying or do they really understand what they think they're accomplishing when they say that? Now, if they say they're going to cut out all carbs and that means they're going to stop eating donuts and sweets and pastries and stuff like that, that's awesome. But I don't know if they really understand that. Um, so I think that's important to understand. You need to turn and burn your carbs. It's as simple as that. You know, Again, carbohydrates aren't the enemy. But if you live a sedentary lifestyle, if you work a desk job, you know, if you sit around all day and you don't exercise, you, you want to be not eating a, a lot of carbs because you're not going to burn them. You're not going to fuel them off or uh, burn them off because, again, looking back in time, you know, people, they could eat big hearty meals and they would never be overweight because they were out working all day on the farm or in the garden or doing daily life. And these days, we're not doing that. And we're eating just as much or more and we're eating more than simple carbs, so that's just a bad combination, bless you. That's so just a bad combination. I mean, not only are we eating more processed foods than ever before in history, but we're more sedentary than ever before in history. You combine those two, and that's bad news. You know, 
a lot of time, like here's a good example, a lot of younger people, uh, teenagers, and I, it's changing now. I mean, there's a lot of obese children now. It's really scary. But for the most part, at least it used to be, if you were a teenager in your 20s, you know, I think about the way I ate when I was in high school and when I was in college, and I ate whatever, anytime. I was super healthy, I had tons of energy, I could play sports, I could eat what I want and do what I wanted. You know, but I was also very active, and that makes a big difference. So you can get away with it, but as we age, definitely know that you can't get away with it. So you either need to change the way you eat, you need to start exercising, or ideally you need to do both. The body was meant to move. So again, the re-emphasis on this point is that carbohydrates aren't the enemy, you, either eat, you need to eat the right ones, and you need to exercise to make sure you're, you're using and burning that fuel. Um, were it, any of you at the, you were at the sugar addiction class? What is anybody else at the, you were at the sugar addiction class? Yeah, we talked a lot about <coughs> sugar specifically, but I mean, you can kind of lump other simple carbs into that. Um, it's just how that leads to addiction, fatigue, and depression. How it literally triggers the same Okay. It literally triggers the same dopamine receptors in the brain, the feel-good receptors in the brain that alcohol does, that heroin does, that cocaine does. They've actually done studies that show that sugar stimulates the same things in the body that these addictive drugs <coughs> stimulate. And that's why sugar is addictive. That's why it's so hard to come off of sugar and you have to treat it like an addiction. You have to be very serious about it. Um, creates fatigue, creates depression, the whole, uh, just like we've talked about a few times, the, uh, the cycle, the sugar cycle through the body, the crashes, the highs and lows, the increased insulin, drops the blood sugar, the vicious cycle of, of crashing uh, leads to mood swings, depression, emotional issues, uh, and fatigue. And when we're depressed or when we have low blood sugars and we need to stimulate our feel-good receptors, that's where the term comfort foods come from. It makes us feel good, it makes us comfortable, it makes us happy. Uh, and it's hard to break that cycle. And kind of the catch-22 with the low-fat diet, if you have a low-fat diet, and what we're going to talk about why you know, the good fats are so important and what they do in the body. But if you have a low fat diet, you're going to want and need and crave carbohydrates and sugars and things like that that much more. So I just put some pretty little pictures of some good carbohydrates on here so you know what the good carbohydrates are. Not that you don't already know, but just to reemphasize it. So all your vegetables, all your fruits, those are some kind of exotic fruits there. I don't know what that spiky guy is, but... Is that pokeberry? Looks yeah. pretty cool. No, those are elderberries. Oh. It looks kind of like poke. They look like poke. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> I know that wouldn't be good. Right? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? I think I'm going to cut the cards out. Yeah, we were, we were at the uh, Renaissance Festival a couple yeah. Sundays ago, and yeah. I, I told my parents I didn't know if yeah. they knew what it was or not, but I'm right there in front of everybody, there were these huge poke trees shrubs, whatever you call them, with just loaded with berries. And I'm like, man, if some little kid came across there and was like, ooh, berries, and ate those, man, that kid would be in trouble. My dogs have purple spots on them because I have white dogs. I have so many poke berries. Oh, really? And they're running, and they come here, they act like they were killing things, and they were poke berries. <laughs> oh, wow. Things. That's funny. <laughs> and then, um, you know, when we think uh, good carbs, I just want to make sure we include nuts and grains and legumes and everything else because people just tend to think vegetables and when you think vegetables you think boring and when you think you got to be healthy you can only eat vegetables and that's so not true we need to kind of change that perception it's a lot of awesome food you can eat to be healthy and then that is does anybody know what that is it's not maggots <laughs> it's hemp hemp seeds can you cook I don't know. I've never cooked hemp seeds. Maybe they are. I don't know. I've never cooked hemp seeds. Have you ever cooked hemp seeds? No. And then exercise, just like we were talking about. You got to move. You got to turn and burn those carbs. 
Um, always use the example of Michael Phelps, but any any athlete, any athlete, they need to eat higher amounts of carbohydrates because they burn them, they use them. They're fuel for their body, for their athletic performance. Um, so we either need to exercise or we need to, again, very drastically change the way we eat or it's going to affect us. Carbohydrate cycle, we went over this. Uh, calories in versus calories out, old science. Don't waste your time with it. Don't drive yourself crazy going to the gym and being like, okay, I burned 180 calories, and so that makes up for that bagel I ate. And that's just, uh, I just don't understand that. You know? And all those weight programs, like the Weight Watchers, and what are some of the other ones? Jenny Craig, and Slim for Life, all that. They're all into counting calories and counting fat grams and doing all that stuff. And that's just a total waste of time. Um, you need to understand what you're putting in your body. You know, they almost make it an excuse to, to eat junk as long as it's low cal. And again, that's not what the science shows. The science shows, for example, you, eat, you drink diet soda, no calories, no carbs, no sugar. Like, they have Coke Zero, right? That has like <laughs> zero anything in it, right? You'll get fatter quicker on that than anything else. And that's because people don't understand the science of what's happening in the body. It's not about the calories. It's about the quality of food you put in your body, whether your body understands it, your body's able to process it, your body's able to assimilate nutrients, your body's able to eliminate it, and that varies based on the foods. But foods that are closest to the way God created them straight out of the earth are the, the ones that the body's going to understand. So real quick, when you eat carbohydrates, your body turns it into glucose. It's just going to use it as fuel. Okay. Your blood sugar spikes, releasing insulin, depending on the food you eat. If you eat a whole fruit, it's going to be a slow, controlled release. If you eat an apple, if you drink a glass of apple juice, you know I don't know anyone who would sit down and eat eight apples at one time, but that's what you're doing if you drink a bunch of apple juice. Um, that's going to majorly spike your blood sugar. Um, the insulin is released to drop your blood sugar down to normal, safe levels, but it does it very rapidly. And then pretty simply, what you don't burn, you store as fat. And that's one of the keys to understanding the concept of fats and how important fat is. Eating fats isn't what's making people fat. It's the sugar and the empty carbohydrates, the simple white processed stuff, that's what's stored in the body as fat. And this is important too, train your body how to burn fat, not to store fat. And I kind of jokingly put here, but it's, it's not a joke. I mean, your body thinks you're preparing to hibernate for the winter. You know, I mean, that's the reason the body stores fat. You know, if you were living up north or even living here in seasonal weather, you know, again, if we live back in the day, you know, when uh, we had bountiful harvest in the fall, you might eat a lot of stuff and you might actually store a few pounds to get you through the winter, to give you some body heat, and to give you some fuel and energy to get you through the winter. You know, the same that bears do. Um, but that's what you're training your body to do. You're training your body to store fat like it's preparing for some kind of a, a, a famine coming or something like that. And instead we need to train the body to burn fat, not store fat. And the way you do that is by consuming fats more fats as opposed to sugars and carbs than by exercising. So now I just have to throw a little picture of the bear in. Bears eat fat, they eat fish. <laughs> you know what a bear's favorite food is? Bingo! Very good, berries. Bear, bears eat berries. So don't tell me there's not power in eating berries. But that's this gigantic, strong, monstrous creature's favorite food. I'm all about that. We, when I was in Canada, some of you might, might have heard this story, but when I was in Canada with North American Urban Spice and we were picking wild berries, there's like two different days where we found a patch. One was a patch of blueberries and one was a patch of raspberries. And we kind of kept a mental note where it was so we could come back and get it the next morning. And the next morning it was gone. Oh. The berries had, the, uh, the bear had their, got there before <laughs> us. <laughs> 